Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome to Super Agents Live. As you know, man, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. You know, your time is valuable, and uh, I hope to, to, you know, I hope the stuff that I'm putting out really resonates with you, and and it makes sense for you to to come and spend between, uh, you know, 45 minutes and an hour with me. Okay, look, here what we do on the show. If you are new, welcome. Thanks for showing up, and I hope I can deliver the goods, and I hope you show back up for the next one. So I talk with uh, top producing real estate agents, authors and coaches. That's what I do. And I do that because ideally I want you guys to, uh, you know, to, to build yourself, uh, build your business. Now, let me quickly mention our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients and I talked to this one guy and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Here's what we're going to do today. There's so many, I mentioned this on the last episode, there's so many free outlets out there, free platforms for you to build your brand. And this is, this is, that's what you guys are doing. You guys are solopreneurs. You are folks that go out there, you know, you tackle the world on your own and, uh, you know, you a lot of times don't have a team that you can lean on. Um, and, and look, your marketing budgets are not giant either. So today we are going to talk with or about Facebook. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about talking about uh, Facebook uh, graph and search. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know if we're going to get there today. <clears throat> um, that may be a follow up, uh, a follow up deal now. Uh, and and by the way, I'm going to start to to all this stuff obviously is on the podcast, but some of the stuff is maybe more illustrated a little bit better when it is written down. So um, we are hopefully the next 10 days, we will be launching our membership site. And, um, I, you know, I think on there, I'll be able to dig into all this stuff. You know, this is like real training stuff. You know, maybe I'll create a course around it. I don't know. Um, but that's where it will be found. All right. Just real quick, uh, a little housekeeping. If you don't know, the hashtag for this show is unpack that idea. Go ahead. And uh, if you hear something that you like, tweet it out. Using that hashtag, I will follow you and I encourage everybody in our audience. We have a very thriving Twitter tribe out there. So everybody, uh, thanks for thanks for participating. And look, you know, people who start using that hashtag unpack that idea, um, it's not uncommon for them to get 100 new followers. And, and look, one girl I talked to got like 300. So it's well worth the time. Now, uh, one other thing uh, today is uh, June 2nd that I'm recording this. It will go live the third and uh, June 19th. I'm we're going to have a little a little live event here in San Diego. Um, I'm going to have 10, maybe 12 people. Uh, we're going to do a live mastermind. And if you've never been to a mastermind, <clears throat> what happens is, you know, we all get together. We all get a chance to get on the hot seat to to talk about our business and uh, share 
really what's struggling, right? Where are you stuck in building your business? And, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I will be moderating that and, uh, you know, so I'll give you my two cents on it and everybody else in the group, you know, they can, they can, you know, everybody's encouraged to chime in, uh, themselves and they can say, Hey, I've been there myself or, you know, I've seen it and you know, this is how I jumped that hurdle. So, um, if you're interested, send me an email at Toby at, uh, T-O-B-Y at superagentslive.com. And I'll put you on the list. Um, okay. And then one last thing, very, very, very important thing, at least, well, I look for me and you, I need new guests. I'm having a hard time. You know, I, you know, I, I reach out to these super top producing agents and you know, some people want to give back and they come on the show and that's very cool of them. Um, and, uh, you know, real estate agents, you guys, if you're a realtor, you guys are a strange breed, man. You know, like everybody's suspicious. Nobody wants to, everybody's f- afraid of, oh man, if I come on the show, I mean, people have told me that, listen, I have a very unique way of farming and I don't want to share it. You know, what they don't realize, what they don't realize is that most people, most people, I can give you the keys to the kingdom. I can tell you what exactly to do. Guess what? I can tell 10 people, right? I can, I can give you nuggets. What are you going to do? Maybe one out of 10 will execute. Maybe, maybe seriously, that is the ratio of people taking action. Now you guys out in my audience are a little bit different because you are, you are definitely, you know, you are tuning into this show and learning. So you know, I still don't think it's, I still really, honestly, I don't think that's a valid excuse. I think if you're a top producing agent, you know, somebody helped you, so you should give back. So if you are out there listening today, man, send me an email. Let's get you on the show. And if you look, if you know somebody that you think should be on the show, let me know. I'll reach out to them and we'll see. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about Facebook strategies. <clears throat> Okay. Facebook. Are you on it? Yeah, you probably are. But let me, let me tell you something. <clears throat> We're going to kind of go to the basics here and, uh, you should have two pages, right? <clears throat> if you're on Facebook, you need to have a Facebook page for you and you need to have a business page. One, you talk about your personal stuff and the other you talk about your business stuff, uh, and really quickly, because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some stuff here that you guys may not may need to come back to this. But uh, if you have a designer, right? So in your cover photo, uh, you're gonna have a background. Now that background that should be right. If if you know how to work Adobe Photoshop or whatever, I'm gonna give you a couple different sizes here that you need to know about uh, for an optimized page. Number one, your background cover photo. That should be uh, 851 pixels by 315 pixels, 851 by 315. All right, so that's your background. So go and get this beautiful background, take it to Odesk or Elance if you don't know how to resize it and say, man, resize this in HD. So you need, uh, I'm, I'm just, there's a lot of different ones, a, a lot of different sizes. I'm not going to give them all to you. I'm going to give you just three. Your, your, your background cover photo should be 851 by 315. Then you're going to have your profile pic. That is a picture in the lower left-hand corner, your profile pic. Now that should be 180 by 180, or I think that will shrink to 160 by 160. So, uh, those are the two most important ones, 851 by 315 and 180 by 180. And then on your page, right, you're going to have underneath your profile picture, you're going to have a little, a little about, right? It's going to say John Smith, realtor, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and if you don't know this, uh, and look, almost nobody knows this. Facebook will not let you in your cover photo. They will not let you put an offer in there. They will not let you put, you know, superagentslive.com. They will not let you put a URL in there. The only place on your, see, this is, you know, I really should make a course out of this, to be honest with you, but I'm going to give this stuff, I'm going to give this to you. Okay, the only place you can put a URL, Toby at, you know, superagentslive.com, 
is in that little about area that that's just under your profile that is super important and if you look around right you know get on facebook later today or maybe right now while you're listening to this and go to some of your uh competitors facebook pages and see how many people actually have that uh because i i look around and not that many people do okay so you have your about area and then on the right you have areas for photos or custom tabs now now what you should do is go to our Facebook page and look and see how we do it. And you can find it. Uh, and look, I've built it correctly. I just don't use it efficiently. And you'll realize that uh, after I'm going to tell you all what to do. And by the way, I don't do it. Um, I'm not really that Facebooky of a guy for, you know, and I and I, I that's bad. Right. I know how to use it and I do a ton of research on this, but I don't do it. You know, look, I'm too busy doing interviews. That's why. But listen, okay. So you're you're a little about section, and then you have your photos or custom tabs just to the right of that. The those pixel sizes are 111 by 74. Okay, so you're gonna have three. Take it to get your stuff, your pictures, have them resized to, to those sizes. Um, okay. So, uh, and by the way, let me just tell you something real quick. I just spent $1,000, <clears> I spent $1,000, $997 on a Facebook ads course, right? <clears throat> this is stuff that I need to go good at, right? I need to be better at ads. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with knowing all this stuff, but I need to get better. I need to optimize my stuff. And first of all, I am not afraid <clears throat> to spend money on my personal development, on my learning. And I really hope you guys are not either, right? You guys should go out and if you see something, you know what, take a throw at it. So I just spent $1,000 on this on this uh, course. Um, so I bought this course and um, uh, they did a great, great webinar. And then all of a sudden I get into the first training and I'm like, um, I shouldn't have paid $1,000 for this, right? Uh, and then, I, but I didn't, I just went through it and then I go to the second live training and they use the same exact slides as the first one and I was just like guys what are you doing why are we you're saying the same stuff using the same slides over and over again <clears throat> so before you spend money uh you know at least big money like that it's one thing to spend 100 bucks or 200 bucks but when you drop a grand on something uh you definitely should walk away about a hundred times better right than than you were before okay so <clears throat> so let's move in so we know what dimensions we have for the pictures now what do we do right so you know everybody wants likes and that's okay but in terms of moving people down the funnel right so i will tell here's here's how the funnel goes right you have a potential friend a, a fan i mean i'm just going to use fans uh even though that sometimes doesn't make sense but so you have a potential fan right so that is a friend of one of your current fans Right. So I have people I have, you know, I don't have that many likes. I have like 400 likes or so, but, you know, all those 400 likes have friends. So those are potential fans. Right. Because when I put something and you've liked my page, you know, your friends see what you have liked. So you have potential fans right at the at the at the, at the top of the funnel. And then you have somebody who has liked your brand. Right. Those that is an engaged fan. That is somebody that says, hey, I'm going to like your stuff and I want to get your updates as we go along. Then you have a little bit further down the funnel, you have the advocate fan. And this is a fan that, that uh, you know, spreads the word about you. They say, hey, you know, John Smith, the realtor is pretty good, right? Go check him out. He puts out good content. <clears throat> so now this advocate, advocate fan, this person has gone out and has been uh, an advocate, an ambassador for you, and they've grown your likes. And the next step up is, right, is a purchasing fan. This is somebody that has, you know, they have gone and they have bought something from you. Uh, and the next at the bottom of the funnel, right, is the super fan. You know, this is, this is, these are advocate super fans, right? These are people that in, encourage uh, their friends and other people to, to go and not only follow you and watch you, but to buy from you. All right. So that is kind of the funnel. And, and this is where... If you know the funnel, um, this is where understanding Facebook ads and how to laser target for people, it will help help put more people in that funnel, help you sell more houses or whatever you do. Because I know not everybody is a realtor out in the audience. Okay, so what happens? How do we 
take a potential for a fan, which is a friend of one of our fans, and move it all the way up to the super fan, somebody who becomes an advocate and tells other people to not only just watch us, to but you know buy our stuff. Okay, so first of all, it takes time, right? You can't, I, you know, I have I, I I have a client, I have a coaching client, and by the way, I have room for one more. So if you're interested, uh, hit me up and and uh, and look. Uh, we'll see if we're a good fit. And by the way, you know what? If you want to use me as a coach to build your Facebook, uh, you know, your stuff, I'm happy to do that. I can do that. I don't necessarily always have to help you, you know, just talk about a, a mindset or talk about how to, you know, get more uh, leads in your real estate biz. Okay. So, but, but so, you know, it takes time. Yeah, and again, so I have a, a a coaching client, and and you know we talk about right. We have we're building his seven streams of lead generation, and uh, and one of them is you know outbound calls, and he would make twenty outbound calls and get bummed out because he's like, oh dude, I'm not getting any deals, I'm not getting any leads. I'm like, you can't do it in one day. You can't do it in 20 phone calls, right? We need to be making a hundred calls because at the end of the day, we're going to have just like a 15% or so engagement rate. So just like building your business takes time, it doesn't happen overnight. Building your Facebook audience, building your Facebook presence does not happen overnight. It doesn't happen unless, you know, you are already an offline giant brand, right? If you are a target and you come online, you know, look, you, you have this already built in pent up demand that will you're, you're taking uh, from offline to online. But we as realtors or we as whatever we do out there, we don't have that kind of a platform. So just I want you to to realize and remember that it does take time. But I'm going to talk to you about nine strategies, nine core strategies today that will help streamline your Facebook activity, right? We're, we're going to try to put you on the fast track to FB success, okay? <clears throat> Number one, give your page a human touch. Uh, I see way too many realtors. I see too many realtors. I see too many real estate groups that is just in the stream. It is just like three, two, four, five, fifty, right? Like it, it, it's it's so and and the pictures are not good, right? They they literally take a picture from the curb and they throw it up on Facebook. And I mean, what does that do? You know, first of all, you should never be posting that on your personal page. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. But even on your business page, I mean, you just can't do that. If you want to, it's okay to do that. But, um, but you know, again, put, give your page a human touch. It can't be all just mechanical business. And, and if you look at the most successful companies on Facebook, those are the companies that step out from behind their logo, right? They, they let people behind the brand, meaning you, uh, if you are the, the face of the brand, you know, they let those people step out and, and show themselves, you know, the, show who is representing that Facebook page. The goal is to communicate with your fans as though you were just talking to friends. Let your personality come through with each and every post. Um, and one of the ways to do this is, you know, step away from your from your niche, your niche once in a while, and you know, show your personal side. You know, through through entertaining posts or photos, right? Change things up a little bit, and you know, share details about about you and your experiences and your everyday life. Right. How do you do that? Right. Have you taken a trip lately? Right. You know, post some pictures of that vacation. Let fans see a different side of you. You know, it's not always the guy standing up in the suit. You know, sometimes you're the guy that's, you know, uh, I, I don't know, playing playing baseball or something. So, you know, you can say, hey, look, you know, my kid just scored his first touchdown. Um, you know, my 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 daughter just learned to swim or ride his bike or whatever. So <clears throat> speaking of the business or not business or whatever. Right. So the the deal is is, you know, test out, right? Everything's about testing to see what works for you, right? It's the 80-20 rule. And I've mentioned this before. When you post to your Facebook page, 80% of the time, right? This is your business page. 80% um, of the time, focus on your business. 20% of the time, mix it up. Show your fans and followers a different side of you, the personal side of you. Share, share photos, de share details of who you are. Don't be afraid to, uh, you know, to, to, to tell people about you. All right, number two, 
Become, and this is the most difficult one, become a content machine, man. You gotta start turning out content. And again, we've talked about this. If you are not great at creating content, and, and look, not a lot of people are. And, and if you are, sometimes it just takes too much time. You don't, you don't have the time, right? So, but you can't, you don't always have to be a content creator. You can be a content curator. Again, we've talked about this a little bit before. You know, so always make sure your content is educational, you know, is entertaining, you know, it empowers your fans to keep them engaged and keep coming back for more. The key to successful content strategy is to consistently create brand new content, mix up your media as often as you can, right? Is that multiple times a week? Yeah. Is it multiple times a day? Sure. <clears throat> Although it's not that realistic. And again, you know, I've played with this, right? So you have, you have all text, you have photo and text, and then you have video. And, uh, you know, just like on my, on this show right here, right? You can listen to audio or you can go to uh, our site, superagentslive.com and dig into the, uh, the show notes. And we all, there's always show notes around, around all of our episodes. So some people like to read it. Some people like to listen to it and other people in terms of video, you know, that's what they want. They want to, they want to watch it. So, uh, so play with it, post your content in a variety of different ways and, and see what happens. And you know what? Um, uh, you know, a simple way to mix up your blog posts is <coughs> posting written blogs, video blogs, and audio posts, right? So you could take one piece of content and represent it in those three different ways. Okay. Try that out. See what happens. You know, drive traffic from your Facebook page to your blog and, you know, and, and, and look, all of you should have a blog and hopefully it is updated. And again, we've talked a little bit about this before. If you took the time to write a blog, a full blog, you can take that blog, cut it down and create Facebook posts and cut it down even further to create Twitter posts. All right. Number three, Cultivate engagement with a two-way dialogue. This is something that that I'm I'm good at on Twitter and not so good at at all on Facebook. So, and this is this is what I mean by that, right? So, so you can't just have like a uh, you can't just post and ditch it, right? Post and ditch it. Post and ditch it, right? You post it and you want to create some engagement. Maybe you do get some likes. Uh, or maybe you engage, you, you create some um, engagement and then you just sit back, right? Clasp your hands on your lap and, and, and let it run. You know, you need to get in there and say, Hey man, thanks for, you know, I should look at my Facebook page and see when, when I've done this well and when I have it, but I'll post stuff and then people will comment on it. And sometimes I'll just sit there and watch the comments. And other times I'll jump back in and I'll be, Hey, look at Tina um, blah, blah, blah. And then Tina replies back and then Tina then engages somebody else. It's amazing. So get into that, cultivate that two way dialogue, you know, especially with, you know, with all of your fans in terms of your, your prospects, if you can get your prospect, you know, regularly driving back to your Facebook profile or Facebook page, whatever it is, <clears throat> and start talking about what you're talking about. Um, uh, look, you know, that's, that's, that's a fast track to referrals. That's a fast track to a deal. And, and here's a tip, you know, we've all heard this one before, I think, right? What is the most beautiful thing a salesperson can hear their name, right? We are all in love with ourselves, me included. Unfortunately, my wife tells me that all the time, <clears throat> but people love to talk about themselves. So, you know, when you're creating your posts, you know, so, you know, create posts, create questions around your fans, around your prospects to get them talking, ask for your fans feedback, ask for their suggestions, you know, their solutions to challenges, you know, you can put out there, Hey, look, I'm having a hard time with this. You know what, you know, who can help me? Who's been through this, you know, so you can learn a lot about your fans, about your prospects. <clears throat> when you take the time to listen, when you take the time to try and engage with them, and by judging at the the time so far on this, we are not going to get to Facebook graph. That's okay. Okay, number four. 
It is important. Create consistent calls to action. So Facebook will give you, right, your brand, the optimal opportunity to create genuine relationships with their prospects and customers, right? Your prospects and your customers. And, you know, I had um, recently I had Kelly Mitchell on the show. It was kind of early on. Uh, and Kelly has a big platform. She was named by Inman. She's, you know, one of the most influential voices in real estate. And on that episode, in that episode, when we talked, you know, she explained to me that how she uses social and she said, hey, I I really work hard to number one, meet people on social media, <clears throat> right? Facebook. And then she, what she does, she takes them offline. So she ta- she takes she says, you know, she meets people online and then uh, she's in Hawaii and she's like, hey, if you come to Hawaii, let's let's hang out. And she does it. Um, you know, that's not for everybody. But but if you did do that and you could take them off on offline when you met them from online, that's really powerful. I had to drink a cup of a little water there. <clears throat> My throat's getting dry. All right. So, um, so again, we're talking about creating calls action. So, uh, how do you do that? What is that? Right. How, and again, we're talking about how you move that potential fan, that friend of a fan to super fan, moving down that funnel. And you start, you start out with simple calls to action, right? So, so here's how to do this. You start out by posting valuable content and it all starts with content. So um, you can post an interesting article, uh, video that's related to real estate. You know, hey, listen, the Fed says that, you know, they're not afraid of rates going up. So and then and then you put with this content a simple call to action, such as click this or watch this. Right. So the valuable content will show your fans that, number one, you're an authority that you know what's going on. Uh, and that, and that you consistently post good stuff. So if you, if they know that around real estate, um, you, you, they, if they know they go to your Facebook business page, that they're going to learn something, they're going to get something out of it. Just like this show, you know, that when you turn in, you're going to learn something, right? Uh, and I don't know, I mean, how much of this stuff in reality do, do, do you know or were you thinking about when it comes to Facebook? Um, I mean, there's some people that are like, hey, Toby, that's like kindergarten stuff. That's nothing. And other people are going, oh, my God, like I've never thought about it that way. So so uh, and hopefully you tune into the show because, you know, you're going to get something good. So I want you guys to be that same way. Same way for your real estate niche. Uh, and here's the other thing. Here's something. Uh, this is way, way advanced. And this is something that even I'm working on right here. But what if you right do something, you know, you post some valuable content just like this. So so here's the funnel. Here's the funnel that I'd like you to think about for your business, right? So here's what I could do. I could post this, and I may use this letter later for this exact thing that I'm gonna explain to you. I could post this this uh, episode talking about Facebook stuff. Um, and then I drive them. I say, Hey, you know, at the end of it, send me your email and we'll get on a webinar. Right? So then I take you to the webinar, you sign up for the webinar. And then on that webinar, I talk about something else. I talk, I give you some good stuff around Facebook ads or how to use again, uh, you know, graph search and how to laser target, you know, find the people that you want to market to on Facebook, right? So, so then, so now I've, you've listened to this, then I take you to a webinar, I'm moving you down the funnel. And then at the end of the webinar, I say, Hey, buy my Facebook product, right? So how, what about, can you do that for your real estate niche? You know, could you, number one, um, there's, you already have some kind of audience, you have some kind of database. So what if you uh, created some ads to that database drove them to a webinar about, you know, about, um, uh, could be, uh, first time home buyers. Let's just say that. Right. So first time home buyers or, uh, you know, uh, the dangers of buying a, a condo or, you know, or, I mean, there, there's lots of stuff, right. Um, uh, and then, and then you take them to a webinar and then you're like, Hey, you know, let's say it's first time home buyers. You give them a webinar, you give them some detailed information. And then at the end of that webinar, you say, Hey, look, um, 
whatever right so the 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 point that i'm saying is you know and it's it's tough because at the end of my potential webinar that i explained to you i would have something that you can actually buy with a house that's a little bit different but again if you can engage with them and just continually move them down the funnel and 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 make yourself as the you know as the the expert as the dominant person in the field um uh you're going to get that credibility and um when they do want to pull the trigger they will. All right. I kind of botched that at the end. Uh, okay. Number five, make word of mouth advocacy easy. So there's lots of studies around social media, right? And nobody's cracked the code on social, but studies have shown that that social media users tend to trust their friends and, and peers more than they trust brands. And this, this is especially with millennials, right? We know that millennials make up the biggest segment of home buyers out there today, right? NAR just came out with that and it was, it was uh, 31% for millennials. uh, And then it was kind of like 30, 30, 30, right? Uh, 30 for Gen X and 30 for, for boomers. So, um, and, and, you know, and maybe, maybe that's why social medias tend to trust or, or users tend to trust their friends a little bit more because, uh, um, because it's more of that group. I'm not sure, but, but look, you know, that, that makes sense, right? I'm going to trust Dominic, the guy I grew up with way more than I'm going to trust Target or, you know, some new restaurant. So if, for me, if I was going to look for a new restaurant or you were going to look for a new restaurant, you would rather get a recommendation from a friend who just ate at the place. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, who would you rather get a recommendation from, right? So your, your friend that just ate there or the restaurant that's promoting its latest special. Word of mouth matters, especially on Facebook. So why am I saying that? Because here's what here's the trick. You want to get your fans talking about you, right? And and all of you going, yes, of course, Toby. I know I would love to have my fans talking about me, but, but how do you do it? And here's what it is. Just make it easy for them. Make it easy for them, right? Um, there's so many things that I need to be doing as well, right? I can have uh, in my, let's say in my, um, uh, there's a plugin. Hopefully all of your, your, your sites, they're built on, uh, on WordPress. And, and there's a, a plugin that is it just is tweet this. It's literally, you put this plugin in and I, and I, I can put a button and I, and I can have a quote and I can go tweet this and they hit the button and then wham, right? It jumps out on there and they, so they just tweeted it out, right? If I'm, if I made it easy for people to promote or to spread what I'm saying, um, their friends are going to see it and then their friends are going to engage and then, and then all, all of a sudden, right? I have a new, a new fan or I've moved people down the, down the funnel a bit more. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. What number six, you want to encourage fan to fan conversations. So you want to enhance your fans experience by creating community that encourage your fans to interact with one another. Right. So and I and look, if for me, I'm trying to do that. We have uh, our hashtag <clears throat> hashtag. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Un- uh, unpack that idea. That's our hashtag. All of a sudden I claim I, I pop that out there. And all of the show's fans are talking to one another. I'm trying to do it with this live event on June 19th. I'm getting 10 people together and I'm trying to build community. Community is everything. How do you build community? It starts one person at a time. But, but in this case, you know, encourage fan to fan conversations. So, you know, how, how can you do this, right? Can you spotlight one of your fans? Can you spotlight somebody who, who just purchased the house from you? You know what? And, and look, you got to figure out when the right time to do this, because once they buy a house, then they're moving. But, you know, what if you, you know, you did a little spotlight on 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 Johnny, Johnny and Melinda with their three little kids who just purchased a house. They 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 came from uh, an apartment. They never had a yard before. And all of a sudden you do a little interview and you talk with them. Right. And, you know, 
and you spotlight them. And then and, and you put that up on social and you really promote that. And how many of your other fans are maybe in that same position, right? They are stuck in an apartment. All of a sudden they see this little this little uh, this little r- r- film reel uh, with Johnny and Melinda and Johnny and Melinda are talking about how great it is, you know, to be in a new house with a yard and how their kids love it and how you as the realtor made that happen for them, right? They didn't know how to buy a house. They were scared of the process, but old Ricky realtor came in, saved the day and made it easy for them. So, um, uh, you know, you can do that, right? You can, if you have a big enough database, you know, you could do a fan of the week. You know, maybe it's not people who actually have purchased from you, but, you know, maybe it's somebody who's in your funnel and you're actively looking for them. You know, can, could you do that? <clears throat> of course you can. You can do something like that, but you want to, again, if you can start to get fans to engage with other fans, and I know that's a bad word, fans, right? <clears throat> I don't like fan and I don't like prospect, <clears throat> but, I don't know what else to use, but encourage that, that I'm just going to say it right. Prospect to prospect conversations. All right. Um, here's, you know, and one thing you can do, and again, man, <clears throat> you know, as I think about this stuff, as I think about this stuff, I, I know all the stuff and stuff that even I'm not doing, you know what I need to do with you guys, my audience, and I've been meaning to do it. And I probably need to get my VA to do it is I just need to create a short and simple questionnaire. I want to find out who you are. I want to find out who, what you care about. I know you like the show. I know you tune in, but you know, what else do you care about? How can I more tailor this, this show to you? You can do that as well. There is survey monkey. I think that's free. Uh, and if survey monkey is not free, which I, uh, I should look it up. Um, but, uh, you can create a little questionnaire through Google. Google's got that. If you, if, you know, if you're all over Google drive and Google apps, there's a way for you to do that. Engage your fans, uh, in, or prospects, however you want to say that, you know, give them a little questionnaire, right? Again, it's just another touch point for you. What can I do better? What are you looking for? What's important to you? What's your background? Uh, but you know, all that, if you can collect that data about the people who walk through, I mean, you try to do that when people walk through an open house, right? And, uh, you know, maybe you don't get it, you know, they're not in the mood, but you know, it's, you know, run a contest. How about that? Run a contest, win an iPad, win a $25 gift card, whatever it is, you know, fill out this questionnaire and, and figure out and don't make it too daunting, but figure out who your people are right? The people who have just given you likes, do you even know who they are? I'm you know, sure you kind of do. Uh, you might see you have a like there, but how much have you dug into it? Probably not a huge amount. Okay. Number seven, focus on smart branding, right? And just focus on branding in general. I, you know, again, all my coaching clients, I tell them, you know, there's active prospecting or marketing, and then there is passive. Now, active marketing, active branding is being knocking on somebody's door, right? Calling them. You know, passive branding is is having a, you know those those uh, magnets on the side of your car or having a raft or whatever. You want to focus on smart branding everywhere, but on Facebook, you know, you have multiple opportunities when it comes to branding your Facebook page, right? One option is make your Facebook page an extension of your website so that it sparks familiarity when they see your, and ideally that's what you want, right? When you walk down the street in your farm, you know, your, your, your brand has a certain look and feel to it, right? Everybody's does, or it should, it shouldn't be vanilla. It should be very like chunky monkey chocolate, right? Something very branded, very unique, right? You have your colors. When, when people see you, walking down the street, you know, they see your company colors on your car. They see your, your company colors. Maybe you're, you're wearing them. I I don't know, but maybe you can literally represent your brand so hard visually that, uh, they can, you know, when they walk, when again, Ricky realtor is walking through his farm, you know, people can look outside their, their window, their kitchen window and go, Oh, Hey, look, that's Ricky. But ideally, you know, you want to be walking in the park you want to be walking down the aisle of the grocery store and they're like, Oh, there's Ricky. <clears throat> so, so listen, there's lots of ways. Think about smart branding, focus on smart branding. And for your Facebook page, make it look and feel like your website. So that, you know, again, people see it and they're like, Oh, that is, that's Ricky. That's, that's, that's Melissa, whatever. Um, <clears throat> Uh, all right. So, so, and the other thing too is, you know, this comes back to, to community. If you have this very, uh, you know, everything is, is tight, right? 
your your website is nice and tight, it looks one way. Your Facebook page is nice and tight, it looks one way. And then all of a sudden, you know, when you get people into your community, right? And for for me and for this show, right, we're doing the member site. And and uh, you know, I want to I want to create a sense of community there. I want I want people to feel, you know, one of the things we're doing is for like our our uh, Facebook mastermind. Um, I'm limiting that. I'm limiting that to to uh, I, I'm thinking about it, you know, but it's like 100 or 150 people. That's it. You know, I want a sense of exclusivity there. I want people to be in and stay in and know if they jump out, they may not ever get back in again. <clears throat> so, you know, can you do that with your brand? And, and look, I know, you know, you guys just want to sell a house. You're like, hey, Toby, I don't want it to be, you know, I, I want I want I want it to be open. Right. I want I want everybody to to feel like they can work with me. And look, that's fine. <clears throat> but if you want to go out and you want to sell seven figure houses, you really need to create a sense of exclusivity. Right. Why? Why? A, a few years ago, um, there's a credit card uh, that I paid for. I, f I forget if it was. Um, I, and I, I spent some time looking at these credit cards. I wanted a very, very exclusive credit card. I wanted it to, when I threw it out there, people were like, whoa. And I, and I remember doing research and it was like, I, I looked at uh, American Express Black, um, <clears throat> there was a few of them. And I landed on one that was, oh, what was it? It was 500 bucks a year, 700 bucks a year to have the credit card. Um, but I got it just cause, uh, you know, there was some exclusivity with it and not everybody had it. And by the way, I had it for like a year and I, it, it wasn't worth it. So, um, uh, <clears throat> all right. So when you guys go guys, gals, everybody, you go and you create your Facebook page, right? I gave you the dimensions that for those photos, <clears throat> Stay true to your brand. Try using the same colors, the same font style and images that you use on your website. Create a synergy between your Facebook page and your website. All right. <clears throat> Number eight. Be deliberate. This a little bit ties into the time frame. Be deliberate and manage your own expectations. Facebook marketing is a thing <clears throat> that is a channel. And the, one of the most important questions to ask yourself as you create your Facebook marketing plan, and you should have a Facebook marketing plan, <clears throat> is what do I want to achieve with our Facebook page and overall marketing on Facebook? Now, a, a lots of times your Facebook visions can be very closely aligned with your company's vision. For example, Let's say that, uh, uh, I'm gonna use a different example here, right? Let's say you own a local running shoe store. So your vision for your retail store is, you know, you obviously, you know, you wanna sell the most high-tech, top-of-the-line running shoes and running gear to all the runners in your local community. So an extension of your company vision, your vision on Facebook may be to create a community of like-minded people who openly share their running stories and give each other support and advice, right? So <clears throat> over time, your Facebook page becomes the ultimate hub for average runners. And you begin to attra attract runners from cities beyond your local community. <clears throat> and you start selling, you know, top of the line running shoes to people all over the world. S setting a clear vision can lead to lucrative opportunities, right? Have that vision. Now, I use that example, and, and it's something not, not real estate related to, to illustrate a couple things, right? Your store in that case is you want to sell stuff, right? You want to convert. You want to do deals, right? You, you want to give somebody a pair of shoes and collect 100 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. But your Facebook is not necessarily about selling, but it's about creating community, I can't tell you how important community is. It is extremely important. And, and for this show, I, I want to do all that I can to create community <clears throat> for all of you. And why do I want to create community? Why is it important for this running shoe store to create community? And why will people be drawn to that community? It's this, right? It's that quote that I often use. It's the law of five. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. How do you go and level up? How do you level up? How, how do you meet people more, you know, uh, more successful than you? How do you spend time with them? You, you know, you, you, not, you, you can hire them, one, but not everybody's got the dough to do that. 
But, you know, you, there's places like this that where people can come and they can spend time with people more, more experienced them, more successful of them, you know, more educated than them, whatever it is, you know, and, and uh, in reality, that's how you are going to love. That's how you are going to increase your network of of uh, of successful people is being part of community. So. For this show, how many of you want to be in a community of super successful real estate agents? I hopefully all of you and and hopefully right hopefully our member site is going to be up and running in the next 10, 10 days you know hopefully you guys will all <clears throat> vote and say yeah me me i will you know and the most important way is you know is to vote with your dollars you know that's one of the things i want to do is is i had this vision earlier I'm a, and i look i'm gonna let a lot of people in for free and to try it but <clears throat> i had this vision where i wanted everybody to have access to all the training that i could put out right <clears throat> now i knew that there's this there's this weird thing right if if you give something away people what right they don't value it they think it has no value because hey if it has value you uh you probably wouldn't give it away <clears throat> now that's not true at least in my case um so then i said well geez okay so no i need to charge for it but but you know maybe i should put a really small i don't want to price anybody out i want i know there are people out there struggling you know <clears throat> i want to give those people a chance to experience what what everybody experiences, right? And it shouldn't matter if, if you have a million dollars or, you know, a, a thousand bucks, you know, everybody should be able to experience at least the stuff that I produce. So I said, okay, you know, look, I'm going to put like a $15 a month price tag on being part of the group. And, and it, and it occurred to me after having a few conversations with people is that, is that, you know, people had that same idea that if it was, it, you know, it look, here's what it was. It didn't feel exclusive, right? It didn't feel exclusive. And because it didn't feel exclusive, people did not value it or value it as much as they really should. So, so for me, and, and, and we'll try to tie this into, to your stuff, but you know, for me, um, I'm going to put this thing out there. I'm gonna let everybody kind of in for free and try it. And, uh, and then we're going to, you know, say, Hey guys, now you have to vote with your wallet. And we're going to start with 147 bucks a month and we're going to slowly ramp it up to where it's uh, not, not a month. I'm sorry, a quarter. And we're going to ramp it up to where it's like 500 bucks a quarter, right? It should cost you two grand a year to be part of this very, very exclusive group of people and to level up your game. Okay. Now, listen, let me, let me go back. So we talked about community. Now, here's a, a tip for you guys in terms of your if you have a team and even if you have a VA, you have a team, but it's important that your entire team gets on board with your Facebook vision, right? With your marketing plan, you can't nothing can live in a silo on its own. So I would just encourage you, you know, once you get get a vision for what you want to create and how it aligns, how your Facebook marketing plan and vision aligns with your company vision. Um, you need to get everybody on board, right? Have a brainstorming session, right? Get, get everybody to contribute ideas for the larger vision for your page, right? You don't know everything. I don't know everything, right? You need to, you need to pick, you need, you need to have a mastermind, right? You need to have an internal Facebook mission. So mastermind with your team, you know, aggregate, curate all the ideas that come out of that because you know, everybody's, everybody's got something, but anyhow, look, just get everybody on board because you need whatever you do it needs to be unified all right we're almost done here what we're at 47 minutes dang all right nine monitor measure and track what it comes up all the time if you can't if you don't monitor it you can't measure it so you need to and if you can't measure it you, you know, you, you can't optimize it. So you, and you're just stuck out. So, and, and look, this goes to how many phone calls you're making, how many doors you're knocking, whatever it is, you need to track everything. So monitor, measure, and track is number nine. With the rise of social media, your customers are now, they're all social customers, right? They love to, sh everybody, they love to share, chat, post, like, and comment. And when they have something important to say, good, bad, or, or, or indifferent, they are very quick to share it on their social networks. Their comments run the gamut from the, from, you know, the, like saying, Hey, Johnny is the best or Johnny is the worst realtor I've ever met. <clears throat> so you need to monitor that stuff, 
right? So you need, and, and that goes back to listening, right? In addition to listening to your fans, do a reality check. Uh, you know, find out whether all your social media activities are worth your time and effort, right? That's the other reason why you need to, you know, really take a look at what's, you know, monitor, measure, and track. So you need to make sure you're on track. Um, you want to set your key performance indicators. I had a guy on here and uh, talking about uh, talking about Facebook stuff, and he kept saying KPI, KPI. I'm like, dude, don't talk to me in code, man. If it's key performance indicators, just tell me that KPI. All right, to figure out your KPI, your key performance indicators. Uh, so ask these three questions, right? <clears throat> this goes back to vision. What do I want to achieve? Number two, what does success look like? What are the indicators of my success, right? When are you going to reach that tipping point? And number three, how often am I going to check in to evaluate my progress? That is super important. You know, social media is a real, again, a real thing. It's, it's, it's not, again, you can't post it and ditch it. You need to watch it. You need to measure it. Uh, you know, so once you answer these questions, what you want to achieve, what success looks like, uh, and how often you're going to check in uh, on your progress, you know, once you have those questions answered, make sure you have methods in place for you to track your Facebook marketing progress. And, the, and there's tools out there and the tools, you know, you're going to choose are really going to really going to depend on the level of measuring and tracking your company needs. Right. Um, you know, uh, a, a solo uh, real estate agent out there is going to need something very different than a, than a 10 person team than a 300 person team. So, um, you know, there's there's lots of tools out there and just choose the right one for you. Uh, you know, I had a guy today ask me about um, the best CRMs. And I said, listen, a lot of my the people on the show use top producer. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's a, maybe a little bit too comp, com, complicated um, if you're doing, you know, two deals a year, three deals a year, whatever, one deal a month. All right. So if you're new to some of this stuff, and I, I imagine a bunch of you are, but if you're new to social media analytics and you're looking for you know, a couple new ideas to add to your tracking arsenal, um, here, here's a few areas you might want to consider monitoring, right? If you know, again, you know, maybe when I say monitoring, people are like, I'll oh, monitor what, right? So, um, the names of the key, here's a, again, a few areas, the names of a, a, a few key people in your company, your company name, all brand names associated with your company, product and service names, competitor names, industry or niche specific keywords, right? This goes back and you can do this on Facebook pay, I'm um, sorry, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Um, so, so how, who is mentioning somebody of, you know, one of your competitors, um, you know, th that's somebody that you need to probably put in, create a Facebook ad for and, and target those people because they may not just know about you. Um, in terms of a few areas you might want to consider measuring and tracking, right? You wanting, and, and if you, I mean, I certainly have this on my Facebook page, but I have lots of, there's, there's lots and lots of, uh, uh analytical tools that come <clears throat> with Facebook. Um, so I don't know if you have to load them up separately or not, but you know, you should look at that stuff, right? So you should know week to week, month to month, right? Engagement, brand awareness, influence, sentiment, how many new likes, how many unsubscribes, what kind of click activity you got, you know, what's your financial return, what's your conversion rates, right? If you, and again, this is about, about Facebook ads, maybe that's when you get it. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe you get all that stuff once you start to do Facebook ads, huh? I just know it's on mine, but yeah, so I mean, I, I have all that stuff, but you need to look at that stuff. So, and again, you know, you do need to just, just decide early on, you know, what you want to monitor. You don't have to create this giant monitoring and tracking machine. If, you know, if you are not very active on Facebook and you're not going to, you know, run ads, I, I, I encourage you to run ads and try it out. And, uh, and I'm going to create something. Maybe it's going to be a course. Maybe it's going to be another episode to, to run you through Facebook ads. But so <clears throat> look guys, that is it for today. I hope you got something out of this. You know, I, I promise you, if you listen to what I went over and you applied these nine strategies, you know, it's going to help you sort through the, the, there's many, many layers of Facebook marketing. There's lots of them. And Facebook is a very powerful tool. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hope this will help you again, create that vision, create that plan 
and uh, and win. I want you to be the the top person in your office. I really do. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for Friday, and um, please go to superagentslive.com. If you've liked this show, do me a favor, man. You know, go to iTunes, subscribe, leave a rating and review. I would really appreciate that. It really helps the show. All right, guys. Hey, I'll talk to you soon.